All right, so let's look at taking the derivative using the chain rule. So the chain rule, if we have the derivative of some function u raised to the n power with respect to x, then that is equal to n times u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of u. Okay, So we take the exponent, we bring it down in front and subtract 1, and then it's times the derivative of the function. Okay, Alright, so let's take a look at some examples. Let's look at this one. So basically what we have when we're using the chain rule is this is this is the n, this is your n, and this 5x plus 4, that's your u. Okay? Whatever's inside the parentheses here is u. So the derivative would be we take the exponent, bring it down in front times 5x plus 4 and then subtract 1 from the exponent and then it's times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses here so times the derivative of 5x plus 4 so that would be times the derivative of 5x is 5 and then the derivative of 4 is 0. And so that's going to give us y prime equals, and then 3 times 5, that's 15 times 5x plus 4 squared. And this would be your answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. All right, we got y equals sine cubed x. Now, the best way to look at this is let's rewrite this. y equals sine x. And this sine cubed x, it can be written like this. Sine x and all of that cubed. Okay? So our exponent is 3. Our u in this case is sine x. So we get y prime. Let me rewrite that a little bit neater. So we get y prime is equal to, so we bring the 3 down, times sine x to the 3, and we subtract 1. So to the 3 minus 1. And then that's times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses here. So times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So I get y prime is equal to 3 times sine x squared times cosine x. And then I'll rewrite this as y prime equals 3. And instead of writing sine x squared, we'll write it as sine squared x times cosine x. But the main thing here is you've got to understand that sine squared x is the same thing as sine x all of it squared. Okay, And that's why I rewrote this end of this form. It just kind of helps to helps you to see the chain rule better. Alright, let's look at another one. Alright, so we got y equals 5x squared over 3x squared plus 2, all of that cubed. Alright, so the derivative y prime, 
we bring the 3 down in front times 5x squared over 3x squared plus 2 raised to the 3 and we subtract 1 so raised to the 3 minus 1 bring the exponent down and then bring the exponent down and then subtract 1 from the exponent and then it's times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses so now we've got to do the derivative of this in here alright so to take the derivative of this we're going to have to use the quotient rule so <coughs> excuse me so the derivative of this the quotient rule is the derivative of the numerator so it's going to be times it's going to be the derivative of the numerator so that's going to be 10x times the denominator 3x squared plus 2 minus the derivative of the denominator which is 6x and then the derivative of 2 is just 0 and then times the numerator 5x squared and that's all over the denominator squared let me square the denominator alright so now, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. <clears throat> so I get y prime is equal to 3 times 5x squared over 3x squared plus 2. And then to the 3 minus 1, so that's squared, times, and then here I'm going to distribute the 10x so that's going to give me 30 x cubed plus 20 x minus 30 x cubed all over my denominator squared and you can see here that the 30x cubed and the 30x cubed that goes to 0 and so y prime is 3 times 5x squared over 3x squared plus 2 times 20x over 3x squared plus 2 all of that squared all right now and you can see I left my squared off here let me write that in there all right so we'll be able to simplify this some more so I can rewrite this as y prime equals 3 and then remember your exponent properties I can I can square the numerator and square the denominator so that's going to be 5x squared all of that squared over 3x squared plus 2 squared okay and that's going to be times 20x over 3x squared plus 2 squared. Alright. And so that's going to give me y prime equals 3 times. And then 5x squared, all of that squared, that's going to be 5x squared times 5x squared is 25x to the fourth over 3x squared plus 2 squared times 20x over 3x squared plus 2 
squared. Alright, so now I can multiply these numerators together. So 25 times 20, that's going to give us, uh, let's see, 25 times 20, uh, 0, 0, that's going to give us 500. All right, and then, so that's the 25 times 20 is 500, and then after I multiply these two, I'll multiply that times the 3, which is going to give me 1,500. So I get y prime equals 1,500, and then x to the 4th times x is x to the 5th over. Now, you see this, this 3x squared plus 2 squared times 3x squared plus 2 squared. Remember, if you're multiplying and you have like bases, you add the exponents. So you can see I have like bases with the 3x squared plus 2 and the 3x squared plus 2. All right. <clears throat> so since I have like bases, I add the exponents. Let me change colors. All right, so I multiplied the 3x squared plus 2 squared and the 3x squared plus 2 squared like basis. So that's 3x squared plus 2 raised to the 2 plus 2. And this would be my answer here. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at one more. So I've got y equals tangent x plus 10 to the 21st power. So I get y prime equals, so I bring the 21 down, times tangent x plus 10 raised to the 21 minus 1. <coughs> Subtract 1 from the exponent. And then that's times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. <clears throat> so the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x and the derivative of 10 is 0. <clears throat> so I get y prime is 21 times tangent x plus 10 to the 20th times secant squared x. And <clears throat> there's not really much we can do with this, so this would be our final answer. <clears throat> and I hope this video helped. Uh, hope you'll check out my other videos. Thanks.